My style, I think, is like always trying to have a little bit of a costume. Leopard, fur, superhero, mechanic, sheet. I'm always a little bit stuck in the 90s, but not in the trendy way, in like a fluffy way. As somebody who like plays all these other people, I do like to have it a little bit neutral. We were kind of brainwashed in college, but I get what they were doing, where you could only wear black. We wanted to just be like as these like vessels to take on characters. I'm currently and constantly in a struggle to like get my freak flag back. My sister's a painter, my mom's a painter, my grandmother was a painter. My sister's obsessed with painting and just had this like fire inside of her. And I was like, I don't have any of that for what I'm doing. At the time I was like an actor and I was like, I'll just, you know, eat very little and I'll be the next Natalie Portman. It's my destiny. I was like at a loss. I didn't know if acting was going to be a thing. And then I got into this Groundlings, which is like a comedy thing. And I did, will never forget the first class of like, oh, you can like be a character and be crazy and I can make myself fully insane. And that, I remember, I was like, it was almost like out of body. This is that spark that my sister always talked about. I didn't go to like a proper wig store until probably like four years ago. For a class in the Groundlings, you have to like go to a wig shop. And there was one um, called Hollywood Wigs, which just closed, which is owned by these two Korean women. And you just go in and there's like this hairspray funk smell. Mm -hmm. And I just immediately fell in love. Because you're like, oh God, like look at all the like people I could be. And then you can try them on. And that's like the most transformative freeing experience. You can be anybody. This was, I think, one of the first wigs I had to get to do an impression of my acting teacher in New York, who sort of Talk like this, except he was a man. Throw your pussy in the ring! It's almost like makes my job easier if the person is really dynamic, then um, I can make an incredible character, but secretly it's kind of an impression. My mom, Chloe, no, stop. I don't want to be on your Instagram. Stop, stop filming me. Stop it. That's my mom. My aunt, who mm -hmm. kind of talks like this and trying to find her wig. So she's kind of got like this Baltimore thing and, um, <laughs> Smoke, you know, she's she's really a character and they'll say so, all sorts of ridiculous stuff to me. And then that was like an impression just that the family knew and they were like, oh my God, you sound just like her. And then I think I like expanded to then take on celebrities. But it really all started with her. So this is Melania Trump. But it's very different when she has like all the makeups and all that and... Oh, <laughs> You made me laugh. That was a Nicole Kidman one. I drank the L Big Little Lies Kool-Aid and then you have like the most amazing cast with all these women. I just loved her laugh in that. I think I found a wig that looked like Nicole Kidman, started with that and then I was like, oh, I could probably do like Reese Witherspoon. You know, and the way she like says like murder. If this Meryl Streep orgasmed, it would be like, oh God, oh well, you know, oh well, you know, oh, it's delicious. Oh, well, you know, and they all... I came! Lately, I feel like making a good contribution to the world of, like, impersonating problematic white women. And not, like, the most famous ones. Maybe it's, like, the wellness ones. Or 24-year-olds who have, like, large health blogs that I just think are, like, so pretentious. And, like, a $600 matcha workshop. Like, that's perfect for me. They have all this money. They're, like doing very well and then like think that they're like gurus that's like fun territory for me what greater joy is there than achieving world peace they doubt you then they challenge you and then you go on and change the world her motive like on a much smaller scale i i do totally get i think i've had moments in my life where like i'm like no matter what this is going to work out and I think that like, thinking that like really did save me in certain times in my life. I think I have that before shows. I'm not gonna bomb. I will not bomb. I go into that. Depending on the show, I'm like, this is gonna kill. I love this outfit cause I, it's like a vacation outfit. I could be in Cabo San Lucas, I could be in Tulum, but instead I'm on my bed with wigs. And then also these ones are like, whenever I wear these people are like, whoa, big knockers. And that's kind of when I know I'm doing something right if I get like, a fun joke out of what I'm wearing. Being femme in comedy is like something that I think I struggle with because like somehow you're like not taken seriously or like if I'm wearing makeup or like being a girl, I'm not like an authentic funny comedian. That's like a self-image thing that I 
deal with. I've always loved a dress my whole life. And then I think as you get older, it, it, like you girls just stop wearing dresses. And then no one wears dresses in comedy. Jeans and a t-shirt and like a plaid. I'll always have like my outfit. And then like when I have to go to like a rehearsal or some comedy related thing that I like really like man it up. Dickies and like a hoodie. No, I'm doing sketch comedy. I don't see it as a bad thing. I think it's just something I enjoy. Where I went to high school, it was like very conditioned that like you do have value in your appearance. But comedy was this way for my body and my appearance to have nothing to do with what I was doing. And then it's about what you bring to a role, not like trying to fit like a hot girl box. I've been truly all the sizes and I definitely had a period, especially in my early 20s, where like it was like, what am I eating? You know, how's my body? No, 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 does this have this in it? And then I think the more I like found a pat, like comedy, like my brain's now always like, you know, how do I fit that YouTube character into a comedy sketch? And like that's fully consuming my thoughts as opposed to like my size. Cause I think there's so much ways to deal with body acceptance. But for me, it was like a creative passion kind of like completely shifted what I put my attention on. I feel the most beautiful when I have a fun, good performance where people had a great time. It's a genuine love of mine that's like whole and pure and I work so hard on it and then it like comes together and it's always like a little magic moment and it's totally authentically me and then when people like respond to it I do feel 